Ladies and gentlemen, Halloween Horror Nights Week 2024 is sponsored by W Energy. If you guys know me, I've been drinking W here for many, many years. W Energy is the best. Damn light. It's the best right there. This is the uh, beach and peach flavor. Highly suggested. I'm a big uh, fan of anything peach uh, that goes around. Uh, on top of that, W, w has... 10 different flavors you can try from right now in their store. On top of that, shaker cups. You're going to need a nice shaker cup. Why not get a W shaker cup? That's going to be a good one. To have. That's always a good one to have. That's what I drink all the W out of, man, right there. But uh, real simple. Just throw in some water, throw in the W powder, shake it nice and smooth, and there you go. You got energy for hours on hours in. Now, if caffeine is not your thing, they offer caffeine-free flavors so check those out right now uh use code knights of whore at checkout for 10 percent off your order on all things w w.gg check out their store use code knights of whore 10 percent off your purchase now enjoy today's video what is going on ladies and gentlemen now it is currently i think like three in the morning right now as i'm filming this so bear with me i'm both a little tired and uh yeah so i thought it'd be fun this year for the hypeless portion of this this hhn week the last video the final video of hhn week that we did something different unique i wanted everyone involved and this is what we came up with everyone has um, recorded and sent me their hype list. Hayes, Rob, and Sammy. I have no idea, as of me recording this right now, I have no idea what their lists are until I start editing it. So, future me, I know you know the list now, but I don't as of going into this recording. So, yeah. I'm going to check off my hype list. Now, I did uh, nine, which I included the Terror Tram in. I know... Um, I did watch a little bit of Rob's beginning. I know he said he was going to inc not include the Terra Tram, so I'll figure that out. But, um, yeah, I, I included the Terra Tram on mine because I feel like it's still like a walkthrough attraction, even though it's the Terra Tram. So we're going to go all the way from number nine down to number one of my most anticipated this year. Coming at number nine, it's no secret, The Weekend Nightmare Trilogy. Um, I've already stated my case, what I think about The Weeknd and his music. Um, I don't think it's horror. Um, so I, I'm going in open-minded and I'm hoping it's much like the 2022 version where it was very well detailed and put together, but I just don't hear it with the music. So yeah, uh, number nine for The Weeknd. Hi Spooky Friends, I'm super excited to be sharing my 2024 HHN hype list with you guys. My number nine is going to be The weekend. Uh, no surprise to people that know me, but I didn't really enjoy the first year, but let's see what the second year has to hold. I know Anthony said that he was proven wrong the first year, but we'll see what happens. Coming in at number eight will be A Quiet Place. The reason why I rank this one so low is I've never seen the movies, so... I really don't have a great baseline on where this story is going to go. I know that the movie is basically in the quiet, hence the name A Quiet Place, um, and is really silent, and that just gives me too much anxiety, so I've never made time to watch the movies. I heard they're great, but I'm not like super excited, so that's why I'm going to put this one as my number eight. Hey everyone, what's going on? I'm Rob, you're watching the Knights of Horror, and I'm here to give you my hype list for Universal Studios Hollywood Halloween Horror Nights 2024. Let's start with number eight. Now, number eight for me, again, this is not, I have to caveat things when I say them. This is not bashing any haunted house, saying like, ah, I don't think this is gonna be good. I think they're all gonna be good. I go into the mindset, when I have the mindset, when I go into these, these events, that every house or maze i walk through is going to be great for me the hype list though number eight is going to be uh ghostbusters frozen empire now only for the reason is that I, I wasn't a big fan of the movie and yes and yes i will say this if a movie's really good 
and you get a haunted house based off that movie, the excitement is there for it. Now, if a movie's bad, the excitement is still there for the haunted house, but it, it comes down just a little bit. I'm not... But again, I'm going into this open-minded. So for me, number eight is going to be Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Number eight, I'm going to go Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Now, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire was not a movie that I was a fan of too much, but Ghostbusters 2019 had some amazing effects in it, and I'm hoping that Ghostbusters Frozen Empire does the same thing. I think there was a lot of cool ghosts in Frozen Empire, so that was really cool, and to hopefully see the original crew again, that was really cool, but that first Ghostbusters in 2019 was phenomenal, so I have high hopes that this maze will uh, deliver on the effects and everything. And my number eight is going to be Ghostbusters. Um, I haven't seen Frozen Empire, but I'm going to be watching it sometime soon, so that way I'm not completely blind when we do go into the maze, but we'll see what happens. I've never been through a Ghostbusters maze before. At number seven, we're going to go with The Weekend Nightmare Trilogy. Even though I wanted to put this one higher for the memes just because of Tony's hatred for The Weekend coming to HHN, I know this queue is going to be super long each and every night. And although the house is probably going to deliver, just standing in a line for two hours is not getting me super excited. Um, so that's why I'm going to put this one here as my number seven. And number seven, which this also hurts me to do, um, Insidious the Further. The first couple of Insidious movies were amazing. Um, the ones that kind of came later, not as good as the first couple, but as far as the haunted houses go, um, Insidious has been a really good property. Not all the haunted houses have been the best the years that they were there, but they were all really good. They had some good scare factors. And I think this one this year... Is going to be good. I think they have a lot of good material to pull from. Um, but just for me, as far as hypeless, because I have seen it before, um, the hypeless really isn't there for me. I mean, not so much. It's not there for me. It, it's just not as high. It's there, but it's just not as high as some other uh, houses that they have this year. Number seven for me is going to be Insidious. Now, I put this at number seven because... You know, I've seen a few Insidious mazes already, uh, and I know this one is going to be uh, on the movies they haven't touched upon yet in a in a maze. So I've kind of already seen Insidious. I know what this you know kind of idea of Insidious is, but what made me put it at number seven too was the fact that they're going to be showing the things that I haven't seen yet. So like the latest movie and all that. Um, so I'm excited to see what they can pull off with this this maze. Um, and hoping that it's going to be a lot different, more new original stuff we haven't seen before. So we'll see what's up with that one. Number six might be a shock to some of you, but it's actually going to be Quiet Place. I don't really know what to expect from this maze. Uh, obviously quietness, <laughs> but uh, I'm not too excited to be seeing the aliens from that movie. Um, Maybe a little bit scared on that end, but aside from that, I don't really know what to expect from Quiet Place, so that's why it's going to be my number six. Number six, we're going to go with Insidious the Further. Again, this is a, a horror franchise I've seen the movies, but I don't really remember them. I know that there's like the red door, there's like that demon, but I'm not super attached to this franchise. Um, so although like I think it'll be a really cool thing to walk through i'm not super super excited for this one whereas i am for a few of these other things on here and i know that insidious has been at the event in previous years so for other people that have gone to the event a few times it's kind of feels like a repeat although it'll be fresh and new for people like myself who would be their first time going through once again not super hyped about this one um for number six oh uh the weekend nightmare trilogy um now, I'll say this. The, the, maybe any other year, this haunted house would have been higher on my list just because when The Weeknd came, the first year it came, I really enjoyed it. I did like it. I thought it was one of the better haunted houses we got that year. Um, but again, it's been here. We've seen it. So, and, and you know, I know they're probably going to use maybe different music, but... You know, again, we've seen it. I know they're going to probably change some stuff and, and kind of um, 
twist things around. I, you know, I could be wrong, but I heard that they're that they're part of it's going to be almost not like a repeat, but part of it's going to be very familiar is the first time we got the weekend and then it's going to change a little bit. So I could be wrong. I don't know. But overall for the weekend, uh, nightmare trilogy, that's number six for me, just because again, I've seen the weekend there before. Um, might've wanted to see a different uh, music property, but we got the weekend. So I'm okay with that. Number six is going to go to a quiet place. Now, I am very much looking forward to what The Quiet Place has to offer. I've been watching a lot of the behind-the-scenes tours that a lot of people have been putting up, so it looks phenomenal. Um, and I cannot wait to see what technology is used in this maze. They're supposed to be going tech-heavy in this maze to really immerse you into that world. Um, the set design looks amazing in it, and, and I can't wait to see uh, what the final product looks like, what stage lights on, actors in, sound on, and the whole nine yards. So... Cannot wait to see what that looks like. My number five might also be a shocker for you guys, but it's going to be Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, I don't know. I, I like the original movie, and I like some of the kills from the new one. But aside from that, again, I don't know what to expect from a Texas Chainsaw Massacre maze or house. Um, I've never been through one before, so hopefully I'm going to be super shocked. But that's my number five. My number five is going to Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I'm probably in the small group of people that enjoyed the movie and thought it was fun. I thought it had like a lot of fanfare um, and, and did a lot to like with like the cameos and such. But I think this one has the potential to be really high on the list, um, considering Ghostbusters in 2019 delivered on a whole whole nother level. I I don't think it's going to be the the greatest house but it has the opportunity to surprise us because like i said 2019's ghostbusters iteration was super fun and fresh although it wasn't the scariest house the artistic design that went into it was great um and it just had like a whole sense of nostalgia so if they can really capitalize on the nostalgia when it comes to this house i think it could go up higher uh the next number five on my list is going to be a quiet place now a Quiet Place, I'm excited to... I love the movies. I loved all the movies. I really enjoy them. I'm excited to see what how they're going to pull off uh, these monsters from space, these aliens, and excited to see, you know, the different scenes that they've uh, had in the movies. There's certain, you know, uh, like the silo, you know, the farm, the, the water, when the water is dripping and she has to hide behind the waterfall. There's different scenes in A Quiet Place that I'm just really excited to see them put into a haunted house and I really want to see how they do these monsters, how they're going to do them, you know, what what are they going to use puppet effects or what's going to happen with them. So I'm excited to see that, but that's number five for me. And it is more in the middle of the road as far as, you know, all the haunted houses. But again, you know, I just, in my opinion, there's, I'm excited for a few other haunted houses. So number five is a quiet place. Number five for me is going to be the terror tram. Now, the Terror Tram is very unique this year. They're doing a whole Blumhouse uh, mashup called Enter the Blumhouse. Uh, from what we saw on the art, it looks like Freaky, the Black Phone, um, the Purge, uh, Megan or Mithrigan, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, and was there anything else on there? Happy Death Day. So those are a few of the icons we've seen uh, in previous years at Halloween Horror Nights. So for them to be returning for the Terror Tram to be in kind of a mashup, should be a lot of fun. Can't wait to see what these characters do. And I can't wait to see a Megan dance, hopefully. Because you know one of these amazing, talented characters are going to be uh, rehearsing that dance just because they want to get that right for someone or a fan of this movie. So we'll see what goes down. My number four is going to be Insidious. Into the Further. Or The Further. <laughs> I think it would have been better as Into the Further, but The Further. So I really like the Insidious series. I've watched all the movies multiple times. So I'm excited to see what they do for Insidious. Uh, hopefully we get to see all the demons, but if it's one, it's one. I'll still be happy. My number four is going to Dead Exposure Death Valley. I know nothing about this house, um, but I know that it is an original and I've very rarely been disappointed by originals at HHN Hollywood in the previous five years I've gone. 
So this house, I think, is going to deliver. Um, it's going to be right where The Last of Us was. Killer Clowns has been in that area. So it's been a lot of great, great houses. It has a rich history of delivering. So I definitely think this is going to be a fun one. But considering I know very little about what to expect in this one, I'm coming in at this one at number four. And number four for me is going to be Dead Exposure uh, Death Valley. And that's because that, the reason I put that at number four is because it's a property from Orlando. And now we've gotten the scarecrow uh, from from Orlando, their haunted house, and it was excellent. It was probably my one of my favorite houses like ever. And so I'm excited to see being that this is and I know it's not going to be the exact haunted house from over there, but, you know, they have a good reputation with me. The houses they bring from Orlando have a good reputation. So that's why I'm excited and I have it at number four. Um, you know, just and then also the photos we've been seeing uh, from the facade of this haunted house look really cool. The the kind of the synopsis of, of the haunted house, it being like this facility and there's zombies and and, you know, they're testing and, and you know, there's a breakout. So I'm excited uh to go through this and see what it looks like. So that's why it's number four. Number four, Universal Monsters, Eternal Bloodlines. I put this one high up on the list because the last time we had a female-led monsters maze, it was phenomenal, and that was The Bride of Frankenstein Lives. And she is also going to be returning into Eternal Bloodlines this year, so I cannot wait to see what that has in store for her sequel uh, since we last seen her. On top of that, the sound stage is going to be put in. It's one of the most iconic sound stages on the lot, a lot of those early monster movies were filmed there, like Dracula, like Frankenstein, uh, of course, Jurassic Park. Like a lot of iconic movies were filmed in that soundstage. So just to be able to look inside one of the biggest sound stages on that lot, if not the biggest sound stage on that lot, uh, is going to be awesome. I cannot wait to step inside there. They filmed the voice in there for many years. Um, so I'm excited to see what this maze has to offer. Uh, just going inside that uh soundstage mostly but i'm excited to see what this maze has to bring to the table this year for those of you that have gone to hhn with me my number three won't be such a surprise i hope um but it's going to be the blumhouse terror tram i like blumhouse a lot i'm excited to see what they decided to put on the terror tram not to mention i really like just the walk and the experience of doing the terror tram um so yeah, that's going to be my number three. And so now that brings us to my top three. And number three, I have Universal Monsters Eternal Bloodlines. As you saw on the channel earlier this week, I have a, a, a love for the Universal Monsters outside of last year's Unmasked in 2023. I think the Universal Monsters usually has delivered with the, with the one exception. And so I expect this house to be a great move to the Universal Monsters that we've come to love over the last few years um, especially with the bride of frankenstein if you haven't watched the video that was my number one universal monsters house at this time um, and so with the bride coming back i think a great storyline um, and really highlighting the female protagonists of the universal monsters franchises is going to be super fun and fresh as well as them being the the the, the villains I, I definitely think this has the opportunity to be quite scary um, as well as it leading into the scare zone. Um, I, I, or actually, no, this one doesn't lead into the scare zone. I take that back. But nonetheless, I, I definitely think this is going to be super fun. I know I'm going to, because this is like a repeat, but for number three, it's going to be, um, number three is uh, Texas Chainsaw, The Legacy of Leatherface. And I know what you're saying, but Rob, like you, you that we've had that before and you've knocked these other houses down because they've been there before. But this is the difference between that and, and this Texas uh, Chainsaw House is that this is like an all star. Like it, it, it's the best of Leatherface and all the all the Leatherfaces that I've seen at Horror Nights have been excellent. So I can't wait to see them like kind of do like the best of Leatherface and kind of. The, the way they uh, describe this haunted house is it's not going to really be at the Sawyer's house. It's going to be like at this at this warehouse and and this meat like this meat, this cattle house or, or uh, slaughterhouse kind of 
um, area. And, and I'm excited to see that. It's something different we haven't seen before. And they're going to kind of like, you know, this is we're going to see different variations of Leatherface. So that's why I have that very high on my list. And number three, number three, Monsteros 2, the nightmares of Latin America. I'm excited for Monsteros 2, the sequel. Um, I cannot wait to see what this one has to offer. Another one that I have watched with the behind the scenes walkthrough tours. It looks amazing. Um, so I'm excited to see what the final product looks like with all the stage lighting, everything, all that actors. Uh, I can't wait to see what they bring for the sequel. So I'm excited for this one. Should be a lot of fun. And my number two is actually going to be Monsters. Uh, Eternal Bloodlines. So I don't know what to expect from an all-female maze, I think. Um, I actually missed the panel and I don't remember a whole lot about this one. But... I'm always excited for monsters and hopefully some more slash music. Um, and then that brings me to number two, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the legacy of Leatherface. Uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, although has been at the event about four or five other times, if I can recall correctly off the top of my head, I definitely think this is going to be a fresh spin on it. Um, and really just highlight the last 50 years of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I know that when it was initially announced at Midsummer Scream, people were a little like, wait, what? Why? Why are we bringing this back? But after John Murdy really walked us through what we can expect, I expect a really gory, disgusting house. Um, and I definitely think that's going to be like a fresh and fun change to, to what we can expect. Um, I, you know, I definitely think we're going to be, it's going to be playing at, at many of our senses, our sights, our smells. Um, obviously they're not going to touch us, but I definitely think there will be some, some fear. Um, especially, uh, you know, as we hear that Texas, uh, or we hear the, uh, chainsaw revving in the distance, I definitely think this one will, will, will scare us. Um, and so that's why I'm going to have that as my number two. Number two. It's a reason why it's number two for me. Um, eternal, uh, bloodlines, the universal monsters, eternal bloodlines, the, you know, you, the universal monsters houses have, pretty much all been hits all been really good they're all for me they've all they've all been in my top two or three even number one every year that they're there they just and then especially with this story um you know the 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 kind of the the van helsing and the bride you know kind of hunting these 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 other monsters so i'm excited to see that you know the music is always amazing just and the sets are always really good. You know, everything about the Universal Monster Houses, I really never had a complaint as far as the way they looked. You know, um, the exception of, I think, one house. I was just kind of like, I don't know. But for the most part, they have a good track record with me. And I'm excited. And that's why I have uh, Universal Monsters, Eternal Bloodlines at number two in... It, it, I'm excited to go through that. Number two is going to go to Dead Exposure, Death Valley. Uh, another one that I've been seeing that's a lot of stuff of on the internet, and it looks phenomenal. I cannot wait to get immersed into the story. Um, I think the kind of idea of exposing government kind of secrets uh, is really cool, especially like if they're working on super soldiers or whatever. Uh, according to the description we've gotten from this maze, uh, I'm excited to see what that final product is, what they are working on, and what we're going to run into in this maze. A lot of fun. Facade looks great with the, with the van crash into the bunker. Cannot wait to see what this looks like. So if you've been checking off the, maze, the houses as we go, you'll know that Monstros is going to be my number one, or Monstros 2, along with the Luchadores scare zone so it's like a two for one so I'm really excited for both of those and yeah um, and my number one is going to be Monstros 2 the nightmares of Latin America Monstros last year delivered La Llorona's delivered so I definitely think that the creative team over at Horror Nights Hollywood is going to deliver on this front um I, I really enjoyed Monstros last year, and then now that we're getting another sequel here, um, it's going to be super awesome, and I'm really, really excited to see what they bring here. I think you all know what number one is. Um, Monstros 2, uh, Nightmares of Latin America, just 
just the lore with these characters, just the the design from the first house, and now we get another house. It, it I love all of this, just like these urban legend lore monsters, and and the stories behind them, and just the stuff that Murdy comes up with to kind of like put these monsters to life in a haunted house. It, it's just it's beautiful to walk through. It's scary to walk through, and these are always um, some of the better. Uh, as far as just story wise, these haunted houses, they always kill it. I really enjoy them. Um, the first one was just amazing. It, it just everything about it, and the, and the facade, man, the facade on this one looks amazing. I, I'm just I'm. There's really nothing else I could say except I'm excited to go through this house, and that's why it's uh, Monstros Two, uh, Nightmares of Latin America. And last but not least, number one, by process of elimination, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, I was sold at Midsummer Scream with this maze because the whole, you know, it being an original maze based on an IP. Now, 50 years of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, they just celebrated the 50th anniversary and... um what a milestone for that original film. Such an iconic film as well. And to represent all 50 years of Leatherface in this maze, you know, from every single movie that they've released dealing with Leatherface um, is going to be awesome. It's kind of like this multiversal world where instead of like him, you know, being different adaptations in every movie, these are going to just be different costumes that he's worn for different occasions in this film. All leading up to that ending finale where we're going to go back to that original film, back to that house, back to that that iconic scene of him slamming the the door and everything, um, and just see it from, all, from the beginning. And it's just going to be a giant love letter to the 50 years of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So I am so stoked for this one. I cannot wait to see what they do with this one. And being that it's an original based off an IP... I'm I'm game for it. They need to do more things like this to keep things creative and original because this sounds like a freaking amazing idea. Well, that is all for everyone's hype list. I hope you guys enjoyed that and those hype lists, man, I don't know what they were, but they probably were heated. Uh make sure to leave a like and subscribe down for the for the uh remainder of the haunt season because we're going to have a lot of content rolling out me hey sammy rob we're all going to be here right here on the nights of horror giving you the best haunt season 2024 coverage we absolutely can with all that being said we'll see you guys next week at opening night for halloween horror nights 2024